um, today it is uh, module 11 that is about the file processing. And um, we will talk about the text files and binary file processing. And this is the list of the topics that we have to study today, right? We may have to review you about a bit about the bits and bytes and the structure. And then we will talk about uh, the way, uh, what is a basic step for the reading and writing binary files. And then I will give you some example of the codes. So you will uh, have the, the idea to write a program in order to read and write files, binary files in the afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to introduce you about, maybe you have known about what does it mean by bits, right? Uh, in digital computer, our information is, can be expressed in the string of bits. Bits mean, um, bit is a short for binary digit. Binary means we have two, uh, type, um, how can I say, two values of this bit, right? A bit can represent exactly one or two alternative states, right? You may have to think about it as an on or off, or one or zero. This is the way that we we'll represent a bit, right? So the value of a bit can be expressed as one or zero, on or off, right? True or false, right? This is the way that uh, we will, uh, it will be it can be represented in computer. However, these two values can be used to uh, means many different things. Mm. But if you want to represent more than two alternatives or two things, you need to use a sequence of bits. So in other words, we can say that we have to use more than one bit. Okay, but how many bits do you have to use? We will talk about this in the next slide. Okay, suppose we think about the gender, right? We can have male or female, right? So we can use only one bit, right? Zero for female, one or male, right? But if we have um, to represent the marital status possibility, um, for example, there will be single in a relationship, married, divorced. So how can you uh, represent it just only in uh, one bit? It's not possible, right? It's impossible. So you need two bits, right? You need two bits. In this example, we can use zero, zero for single, zero, one for in a relationship, one zero for marriage and one one for divorce. But this is a way that we can represent um, the status in the, maybe in the structure, right? Uh, for for uh, a specific values. Right. For in this case, we have four, four possible values. So you can use two bits. Right. Uh, can you can you see the re, uh, the relationship or the formula for this? Okay. What if we have the more mar merited or uh, marital status like this, right? without uh, separated divorce? Okay, suppose in this way, we have five possibilities. So how many bits do we need to store this marital status? Anyone in this room can tell me? We have five status. Okay. <laughs> what does it mean, Jilawat? 32. Okay, um, we can use three bits, right? Mm -hmm. Mm 
We can use three bits. Why? Because three bits, right, can represent zero, zero, zero until one, 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 right? So it can be, um, okay, if we list that, if we list the, <clears throat> the possibility of three bits, it will be zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, and so on, until one, 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 right? So we will have two raised to the power three possibilities, and it will be eight. So the number of eight is greater than five, right? Okay, five is less than eight. So in this way, we uh, so how many bits, right? We will we can answer three bits, right? Because five is less than eight. Okay. Very good. Okay. How about? Okay, we have another example. In the Wisawa Watana building, there are 11 floors. So how many do we need to store the floor, right? Now we have four. Four bit, right? Why? Why not three? Because three is eight, right? But eight is less than eleven. So we have to move to uh you we have to use four bits, right? Four bits means two raised to the power four, that is sixteen possibility and eleven is less than sixteen. So we can use four bits for represent. 11 fours for Wisawa Watana building. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Why do we have to, uh, to represent the number of the floor? Can you give me the application of, of uh, why do we have to, to sort the, 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 the number of the floor? So sometimes when you are trying to represent the data structure or the record, right? If you want to show that, um, what is my, I, uh, maybe uh, I have to, to, to show the value of my floor, my office floor, right? Because I'm working on the, the, the 10th floor, right? So I can keep the number of 10, right? So in this way, we have to, uh, to use what we call the date primitive data type in C programming. For example, we can use short by short int or wrong, right? So, but um, the length of the values, the possible values for representing the, the number of the floor will be just only one to, uh, to 11. So if it, it should be better if we can um, reduce the number of the bits that we have to keep, or you have to be you, uh, you have to use. My question is why? Why do we have to reduce the number of the bits to be sold? Anyone in this room can tell me. This is also another example. Even Thailand, there are 77 provinces. How many bits do we have to use? Memory optimization. Memory optimization. <laughs> Thank you, Lamin. Uh -huh. Seven bits. Mm. Considering your 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 answer, Carl, 
um, memory optimization. Memory optimization. Um, uh, I, I will say that now the mem the physical memory is cheaper. Like we don't have to reduce or to optimize the memory, uh, the physical memory. Mm -hmm. But mm, but more or less, you are your answer is correct, right? You have uh, okay. You have to to uh, yeah. Memory allot uh, memory optimization can be used for not just only for the physical memory, but also for the for the the file sensing as well. Mm -hmm. The answer is like this. Um, suppose we want to um, to upload or download the data, right? Normally the, da the data now is very big, right? So if you want to make your, your transaction faster, maybe you have to, uh, or, or maybe you have to reduce the number of the, 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 the structure or the data that you are going to transmit from in, uh, in, in, in the net network, right? So you have to reduce the number or the bit size, right, for, for, for transmission. So in this case, maybe you may have to, um, instead of using or uh, transmit the long integer, Right, that, that can represent uh, the number, but if you have many records to be transmitted, you may have to reduce the number of the bits before you uh, transmit before you transmit it to the network. So it would be better, right? So that's why you have to know in, in the sense of the computer engineering, you have to write the, the, the optimized program, right? So this thing that you have to keep in your mind that you may have, sometimes you may have to, uh, like optimize the memory, optimize your package right before transmission. Mm -hmm. So in this, um, come back to, to this, um, um, this question, right? How many bits to represent the, num the number of the province in Thailand, right? The answer is seven because seven to, to less to the power seven is 128, right? And, uh, 77 is less than 128. Okay, that's nice. So you have the idea of the number of the bits that you are going to represent. So this question, if you want to represent the, 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 num the telephone number, right, how many bits would would you need to represent one digit between zero to between zero, zero and eight uh, and nine? What does it? Why you are so quiet? It is too early, too early in the morning. Okay, I have a question. If you want to uh, store the telephone number like this, right? What what is the optimized way or optimized method to to keep the one two three four five 
in the telephone number we have 10 digits, right? Ten digits. Or 10, 10 number for, for the telephone number. 30 bits. Is it enough? Do you think it's enough? How many bits would you need to represent one digit between zero and nine? And if you have to store, in this case, nine digits, right? But um, actually you have to keep the zero, even it is, uh, you have to use zero. You have to keep zero as well in front of the, the, the digit. Thirty-six. When you answered, we should keep zero. Actually, mm -hmm. if uh, when when you answer the number of the bits, right? Could you please tell me the reason why as well? Because I cannot guess uh, why it is thirty. Why it is uh, thirty-six. Okay, even in this slide, right, it, um, we, we ignore the zero, but um, okay, let's think like this. Um, if I want to keep 10 digits, including zero, so how many bits do we have to use? Zero to nine, we have 10 possibility, right? So for each digit, we have to keep four bits, right? And we have 10, okay? 10, 10 number that we have to keep. So I think the number of the bit will be four multiplied by 10 be 40 bits. Actually, 40 bits, right? Um, maybe someone may uh, might have a question like me now, right? That is, is it possible that we will keep this one? In long integer, but we can use long because long is uh, eight bytes, right? Eight bytes, eight. Oh, it is sixty four bits. So it's get better than forty forty bits. So forty bits is better. But if what if we keep integer four bytes? Is it possible to keep a big number? What is the maximum or the plus maximum number of the telephone number? Zero nine 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 nine. Right. I think this number is quite big, right? Compared to the integer for four bytes. I think four bytes is not possible to keep this number. So this one is the optimal solution optimal solution do you think you can find the best solution okay if we uh, ignore zero right because we have known in advance that zero will be the okay the default bit right it is default by default right you will have the zero in front of the digits the nine digits so you can ignore it and then you just keep only a or, or sorry only nine bits right so you can have the 
okay, the best solution will be uh, four multiplied by nine, which is 36 bits. Okay, that would be correct. But in this, uh, in this, the, in this chat, right, Goff told us that he can find 30 bits. You can use 30 bits, right? Goff, do you have any, um, anything to say? How did you get uh, 30 bits at ISO? Um, I didn't include zero, but what if you don't uh, input zero as well? Why, why you come up with this number 30 bits? Oh, it is a wrong calculation. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's a wrong calculation, no problem. Okay. So, because I'm, I'm, I'm wondering that, is it possible to have the better solution compare, uh, better than 36 bits? Okay, no problem. Okay, if there is no argument about 36 bits, so I will move on to the next slide, okay? You can think about this later, about this uh, solution. Okay, now we, here we come to, um, to find the number of the bits that you may have to determine, okay? So you know the, the formula now, right? You have to use the power of two, right? So this is the algorithm in order to get the, the, the possible, the, the number of the bits that you have to use. If you have, uh, it, it is given the number of possible values, right? So in order to find the number of the bits, right? First of all, you have to set the bit to zero and then get the number of alternatives, right? Okay, and while to less to the power of bits, right? the number of bits is still less than the number of alternatives. So add one, two bits, right? So this is the loop, right? To start, starting from the, the, the bits, bits is available, right? First of all, you have to set it to zero and then you have to share to less to the power zero. Is it less than, still less than the, the number of alternatives? input right so you add one two bits right and then go on until you can get the number is that is less than or equal to the number of alternatives and then you stop so the answer you get the the bits right that you need for keeping the or to store this um as a number of alternatives okay this is a this is a program that you can use, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe. Uh, okay. Let me try to copy this. I have to set new share to this. Okay, can you see the screen? I guess so. And then I copy. Oops. Okay, yeah. Okay, I copy the program here, right? And then run. Okay, how many alternatives? Okay. So I will start from the 77, right? This is the number of the provinces in Thailand. So uh, you need at least five, uh, seven bits for seven, 77 alternatives, okay? Nice. If uh, this program, right, you can just simply maybe, okay, you have 144 alternatives, right? 
you need eight bits. Okay. Okay, that's good. Okay, maybe you can you can copy the program and try to run by yourself, right? This is the okay. Stop share. And then come back to Okay, this is one, uh, oh, this is a bit required. Okay, um, I have to say that uh, this is uh, for the reference. Um, I, uh, this PowerPoint here is, uh, was created by Sally. Sally was um, the instructor who teach, uh, who taught this course by CPE 100. Um, for maybe 20 years, right? But um, uh, this year is her retirement, retirement. So I have to take in charge of this, uh, this course for her, right? And then I think um, her materials is, uh, are very good, right? So I, I just use her. <clears throat> so I have to, to claim that this is her, um, her program and her presentation. Okay, and this one is a shorter program, right? When you want to get the number of the bits, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you have to review faster because we have, we still have many pages or many slides today, right? This is about the bits and computer memory. Computer memory is a very large collection of bits, right? The more bits needed to store a particular value, the more memory that will the, that value will use in computer. Okay. Um, and normally when we want to uh, measure the computer memory, normally we can use bytes, but a byte is eight bits, right? Computer memory can be divided into eight bit slots, right? Each of which has a unique identifier call address, okay? Um, okay, this one is the amount of computer memory you need to store an item of information depends on the number of possible alternative values. The largest and smallest value possible that we have already talked about this, but when we write a program, we need to tell the computer how much memory space to reserve for a different item of information based on our understanding of the problem. Okay. And the next topic is uh, if you want to declare variables to reserve memory, right? First of all, we have to know the, the different kinds of information, right? The creations tell the compiler how much memory we think we need to store the different uh, possible values. We expect the variable to hold. Okay, let's see this example, these two examples. Character, if we want to keep, um, if we have to keep uh, 31 characters, right? We have, we need to allocate the memory to, Thirty-two characters to array of characters because we have to um to uh, reserve the backslash zero right, which is the terminator for a uh, for a string. And in future seconds, enough memory to hold the time the car travels in 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 the unit of seconds, and double is a speed enough memory to, to hold the car velocity, okay? Oh, we can, could be the, 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 the real number. Oops. So in this way, you have, you need to, uh, to, to keep the character so it can represent between zero to 200 and 
55, right? If we are dealing with the A to Z, A to Z, and small letter A to C, right? Okay, so eight bits is enough, right? So you can use one byte or one character, right? And integer, right? Integer can be, or you can use 16 bits, 32 bits, or 64 bits. It depends upon the computer and the compiler, right? But normally we use 32 bits for integer and 60 or 64 bits for long, right? But in some compilers, uh, they will uh, use 64 bits for integer. It depends, right? Okay, if you use 16 bits for memory, the value that can you, you can hold is C, uh, zero to this number, 655T5. I saw it is a 655T6, right? This is a representation for the two less to the power 16. Two less to the power 16 means you will have 16 bit, right? In order to keep this value. Okay, this one is uh, for the positive number for the integer, but uh, in the real world application or integer, it actually uh, cover both negative and positive number, right? So you have to divide into half, to half, right? So the minimum number will be minus T2766 to plus T2767, right? I don't think so. This value, six, seven. Okay, this, uh, what is a half of this one? Six, five, five. You may have to use calculator six five five two five six five five two six actually divided by two so you get three two seven six eight okay this number is not correct this one is minus three two seven six eight okay this one is incorrect six eight. Okay, and for double, right, you will use uh, the, the number of the bits to, for the double is 64 bits. It's very, very big number, right? You are going to know it. Um, you, are, you, you, you are going to, to, to know how big is it uh, from the, uh, I'm not sure because I'm not going to teach you uh, algorithm design, right? But in my course, in uh, when you are the sec second year, right, uh, you will study uh, algorithm design, but I will teach the regular program, right? Normally, I will start from the IEEE, IEEE 754, right? This is the, because there are many formats for double or for real number. Right for fourteen points, right? Um, but uh, in general, we use I triple E seven five four in order to keep the the value of the real number, right? If we keep, uh, if we have the sixty four bit, right? We will separate into three parts. The first one will be the sign minus or plus, right? We can use just only one bit, and. This one we will have to keep the, um, there will be two, two parts, right? We call mantissa and exponential, mantissa and exponential. You can, do, do you remember our Cardo number, right? 6.2 multiplied by 10 
Race to the Power 23, right? This is the avocado number, right? Um, this one is uh, in the part of the mantissa, right? We keep 6.02. And for the exponential, we will keep 23. This is the way that the double in the IGB 754 format use, right? We will separate into mantissa and exponential. And this is this technique you have to um you 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 can deal with the very very big uh, real number. Okay, we we can talk about this later, right? Just 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 you can just know why do we have the, the way that you keep the real number in the double or floating point format. Okay. In C program, you will have different kind of integer starting from short integer and long, right? Short is less than integer and integer is less than long, right? Um, sometimes we don't know exactly about uh, the maximum limit for integer, right? You can use the include limits.h, right? And you can find, you can, um, you can call integer underscore max or integer underscore min in order to define the largest and the smallest value. But right, in case that you want to write program, you want to check for the maximum limit or minimum limit for the integer, but right? you don't have to remember because if you see in the previous slide, right, it's um, difficult to, to remember the maximum number for integer or even for the long number, but right? you can use limit.h right, in order to uh, define the constant for integer. Why does the size of an integer matter? Mm, okay, this question is um, interesting, right? We need to know the maximum value, right? Because sometimes when you calculate for the, the, in the integer, right? You can uh, increase the number, the value of integer, right? But it could be the, the, the situation that uh, is overflow. What does it mean overflow, right? Overflow means like the, like this. Okay, I will. Okay, I copy this and then I stop share and then share this again. Okay, I copy the program here. Okay, uh, uh, this program is, uh, I want to show you about uh, of the overflow. Okay, I run this program, right? Okay, now this is uh, the integer. No, it is a byte, right? So the maximum number of the byte will be 255, right? So now the test value is now 20, 25, uh, 254, right? When I hit enter, Right, we add one to, to, to this and then we can get to five, five. Now, this is the maximum number for bytes, for bytes, okay? So when I hit enter again, right, it, the value will be, what, what will be the, the value? It should be 256, right? But because it is overflow, so it's wrap around to zero again. This is the way that the computer does, right? Actually, it is um, it is supposed to be two hundred and fifty six, right? When you add one, right? But because the byte, the maximum number, the positive number is two hundred and fifty five. So when we add one more, we add more one to this value, we will wrap around to zero. Okay, this is what we call overflow situation. Okay, when you add one more, you can get one and two and so on. Okay, this is, uh, I'm going to show you about uh, the overflow, right? So in order to solve this problem, you may have to, okay, you can see from this side, we identify it as unsigned character. So the test value will start from 253. When we add one more, so we have 254, 255, and then it will be overflow and and wrap around to zero. OK, 
Okay, we can run it again. Okay, if you can. Okay, enter, enter. Okay, see? This one we call the overflow situation. Okay. Go back to the slide. Okay, if you want to, to check it out, you can just copy this code and then try it. Okay, so, and the next part that I would like to tell you about that, I will review you a bit about the structure, right? A structure is a kind of, if you want to, to collect um, the elements, the relative, related elements into a record, into a structure. For this example, I want to uh, maybe to create a dish, right? Main dish for meal. So we have the start dish, vegetables, meal, place, right? And the main dish, right? So we have to collect this into and copy, right? Into a data structure. And then, okay, we can think about it as a single package like this, right? Compared to this, right, it has separate dishes, right? And if we want to make it into, um, okay, like in, into a compartment like this package, right? So this is the, the, the good concept, conceptual model for define the structure, this structure, mu t, right? You can use type define, type depth, right? In order to define this structure, and the name, you can name it, the name name of this structure to be mu t. For this example, you can see that we have, we, we use the capital letter to identify that is a new variable, right? This is the new data type. So you can use this one as a data type, by right? user define that data type, and then it is all capitalized, okay? So in this structure or this record, right? There are four, elements, right? Main dish, starch dish, and vegetable, right? You can define it in terms of the string, right? The maximum number of the character in for this uh, fields will be 63, right? Excluding uh, terminator, right? So when you define mu t, right, as a this structure, and then you uh, define it as an iterate mu, right? You can initialize this data structure easily, right? You can use real parmesan, mashed potatoes, green beans, right? Will be the, the value of the main dish, starch dish and starch dish and vegetable, right? Respectively. And the meal price will be $300 or 300 baht actually, not $300. Okay, and this is a way that why we have to define in terms of the structure. And if we want to uh, uh, to access to this, you can just simply use dot, right? Italian meal dot, main dish, you can get real parmesan, for example. So we can also use the data structure or the this structure as a parameter of passing to the function. Like this example, print dinner, if you want to print out the, the dinner information, right? You can just simply um, pass the value mu t. Mu t is a user divided data structure, right? You can use this. And then if you want to access to the elements in my meal, my meal is a variable um, of the type mu t, right? You can just simply use my meal dot main dish, my meal dot starch dish, my meal dot vegetable. Okay, and then you can print out as the string percent sign s, right? Okay, it can be remarked here that we can use dot in order to specify or select a particular element of the structure. Okay, this is a way that you can access to the element of the structure. That is pretty easy. Okay, this is um I call it. I, I go a bit faster because I think you all know about this. And this is a way that, um, this is a conceptual model of how to define the, why do we have to use the structure, right? Okay, once again, why do you define mu t as a, 
as a data structure or the type and five new like this. And then you can initialize by using um, base here, bases here and semicolon to end up this uh, statement, right? Five stream, five, uh, French five and piece, right? And then you can print out dinner. So in this way, right, it's quite um, understandable, right? When you want to define this package, right? This is a fried meal, right? You can just uh, refer to, you don't have to refer, uh, you don't have to specify the, the, the detailed uh, information in this one that you can just simply put it into the data structure. And then if you want to print out the detail, right, you can just simply use this function print dinner, right? And then send um, this one as a parameter. Right, so the, 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 the result of the function is uh, for the bird tonight we have fried shim, fried fish and peas and the dinner will cost this, okay? You can just simply use this function, right? In order to print out these five lines, print the contents. So it's very easy, right? And understandable. So this is the, the pros or the advantage of how to use, of using, um, structure right in order to print out the, the information inside the structure okay and um, if you declare meal to one dinner like this right without the initialization it means that you are going to uh, to use this uh, template right you can see that is an empty dish right this uh, empty plate right so when you define like this it means like this. Okay, if you define the array of big meal, so it means that you are going to define the, the template or the, the dish, the, the empty dishes like this. Okay. Okay, for from the, the array of the structure, right, you can reference it very easy, right? Like, like, like the previous declaration, right? you define weak meals as an array, right? So you can define, you can declare weak meals index one. Index one means the second weak meals, right? And if you want to access to the meal price, you can use dot meal price. So this is very easy, right? You can use this as a variable and then you can assign the value to the meal price as well. Okay, in order to um, make it easier, if you want to print out seven, seven um, dishes, right? So you can just simply use a for loop like this, and then you can print dinner with meals and then index i, i from zero to six, right? That is, you can, this is very easy to use for the, you can also use the data structure or, or the, you can use the structure start right very easy in the sense of the normal variables so now we have to uh, question that how much memory will be used by a structure right we have already know about the size of operator right size of operator will return the number of the bytes right of this data structure Okay, this is a matrix function, right? You can use size of, so you can identify the size of the function. Oh, no, sorry, size of a variable. For this example, if we have input is an array of character, right? 32 characters, right? When you use size of input, it will return 32, okay? Okay, this is some examples of how to know the size of the variables, right? So um, you can use, okay, if you have time, you can use, uh, try to uh, run the program check size.c, right? Okay, here, I'm not, um, okay, this is, um, I'm not going into detail about this, but I want to, to, to tell you, uh, what what is a size for integer, right? 
integer value the size is four, but p in integer value p is a pointer or the address, right? Integer star is eight. And see that for integer value we keep only four bytes, but for address we will keep eight bytes. Double. The address for double is eight bytes as well. See? Okay, and long, right? For long integer, you will have to keep eight. Eight, eight bytes. Double eight as well. And for this structure, whether, right? Whether there is a structure, whether there is T is a structure, right? Keep double, double, and car. Eight, eight, 16. Right. The size of Thursday, which is the can as a weather day T is 24. This data structure, there are 24 bytes for this data structure. So if you have seven array of seven uh, weather day T, so you have you need to have 168 bytes for this. Okay, if you um, are not sure about uh, the size of the data structure or the primary, um, the primary data type, right, you may have to uh, use the size of, you know, check for, for the correctness of the size. Okay. Now, here we come to the um, the main topic of today, right? Um, in a, uh, in the last week, right, we talked about uh, how to write the text file, right? To read the text file and then write it back to, to the text file, right? But in computer world, right, we have not only text file, right, but we also have the binary file. What, what are the differences between the text file and binary files? Do you know that? For the text file, if you use, um, maybe you can use the notepad or you can use word processor, you can read it, right? As a human being, because it is, um, or you can, you can type, you can use the function the command type on window, or you can use cat. The binary file consists of only one and two, one and zero. Yes, that's correct. Uh huh. Um, yeah, binary file as its name, right? Binary by by is two, right? It will only keep the zero and one, right? But for the text file, you will keep the value or consider the value in the text file in bytes, right? By is eight bits. Okay, you and for the binary, uh, for the text file, you can use cat or type command, right? In all sure the, the value. Mm -hmm. And the text file will represent ASCII number, right? And also in the text file, you can also use the backslash n, which is a new line, right? Okay, and this is an example of text file, right? C source file is also a text file, CSV, right? This is an Excel file, it's also the text file, or HTML, HTML files that can be used for the website to educate the website, it's also the text file. And here are the, some examples of binary files, right? You cannot type C executable file, right? You cannot type or trying to see the value the of Excel file. Right, or JPEG or MP3, right? These are some examples of binary files. Okay, uh, what if we want to uh, read or write files, right? This is a basic step for in reading and writing files, right? First of all, you have to prepare for file open, right? Prepare for file open to check whether the existence of this file, like right? if it's successful, then try to read the data until 
you finish it and then free the resource, then close file. But if you cannot find the file, right, you may have to handle the error and then to print out um, file, not file, right, and then exit. This is the basic step on the flowchart for reading and writing files, right? So if you want to go into detail about this, right, first of all, you have to, uh, in C programming, first of all, you have to declare files and asterisk sign, right, in order to declare a variable of files, right, and again, it is a pointer, right, because we use a star. And then you can use file open in order to, to open the file, right? To open a binary file for window, we can use a B. Because uh, you can see that after, uh, when you use a file open, right? You, you need to uh, use the, how can I say? The conditions, right? Condition for read, open for read only, open for write only, or open for read or write, but if you want to open for binary file, you can use RB. RB mean read only for binary file, or the WB will be write only for binary file, right? For the text file, you can just simply use R or W, right? Okay, that's just enough, but for binary, you have to specify it as RB or WB. B stands for the binary file. Okay, but uh, uh, this is a remark that is uh, it's not necessary for the Unix or Linux operating system. Okay. And we can use the file get s right, to get sync. F scan f, f read, right? And the last one is, please don't forget to use file calls all the time, right? Maybe you will have to cross and some errors, possible error if you didn't cross the file before the program termination. Okay, this is a basic step. So let me go to the detail of the file. Okay, for the binary file, if you, if you want to deal with the binary file, right, first of all, you have to uh, declare it as a file. Right? Once again, you can see that this is the capitalized files and asterisk sign, right, star sign. P input is a pointer to the file. But first of all, you have to set to now. And then in order to open this file, you can just simply use P input equal to F open. And this will be my file name. It could be, it should be set. It is, it is a string, right, a file name. You have to define the, the directory or the path for this file, right, in order to get the, the, the file. And then RB, what does it mean by RB? This file will be open for read, and this file is the binary file. When you pass this variable as a document to all the other function for input and output, okay. Okay, you can notice that this file pointer, P input is a file pointer. Right, you can just use uh, as a file, right? Um, okay, we will, before we will have to read it, right? So first of all, you have to know how to write a binary file first, right? Because you want to to get the, the the binary file right in order to do in order to be used for reading right so you need to know how to write a file right so in order to, in general to read a binary file you need to have a lot of knowledge about how it was written right what type of information so in this file how is it how is this information organized right if you don't know this you cannot read the binary file because binary file is quite specific quite spe is specific you have to know the data structure that is right that is written in this binary file otherwise you cannot read it okay so that's why this is why it is different from the text file right 
which are have consistent line based structure, right? And it is uh, in the character format, right? You can understand if, even you open the file and then you can read it, right? Okay, this is um, the way that you open a binary file for input, uh, for output, sorry. Okay, you can just simply start file, p out file, right? And initialize it to be now. And then if you have an array of character file name, right? For example, this one is students.dat, right? Okay, we are going to use this in, in, in the lab in the afternoon. Okay, don't worry about that. And then you can use file open, right? This file name, right? student.dat, right? And then you have to write binary. Okay. And then if, what does it mean by if output file is equal to now? Then F error cannot open file, right? If you cannot open this file, so it will, this one will return now. Otherwise you can write, okay? And then in order to write binary file, you can use F write, Okay, F mean file and write mean write. Okay, you have one, two, three, four parameters, right? P source, element size, element count, and then this is a file pointer. You have known this already, right? This is a file pointer, right? This is a pointer to a file that you are going to write. And then the size of the elements, right? For um, as I just told you that if you want to write into the file, into the binary file, right, you need to know the data structure. You have to write uh, one data structure at a time, right? And the number of the times will be the element of the count, right? Element of the count will be the, the number of elements you want to write. And the element size will be the size of the element you, you want to, to write into this file, FP. Right. And F source, right, because you have to deal with the, the current position of the file, right? P source will be the first argument pointer to the data you want to write. Once you write into the file, right, this P source will be changed, the address will be changed. This one is the current position of the file, but this one is the position of the file or the address of the file, okay, or, or the, the, the pointer to the file. It depends, it's up to you, right? But this one will be fixed, but this one will be dynamic, right? P source will be changed until you close the file, the binary file. Okay, this is an example of how to write the binary file, right? First of all, you may have to test the count right to, to 20. And this one is the data. And then you open the file, right? P out, right? You open my test.bin, right? In order to, um, you want to write into this file, right? Why? How, how can I know that? Because this one you set to WB, right? Write binary file, right? If P out is not now, it's not now means you can open um, uh, appropriately. So you can write the data, right? F write test data. What does it mean test data? Test data is here, right? Size of integer. It means that uh, write integer one after another. And this one is the number of the, 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 the variable, or the number of the values, right? In this case, we have 20 numbers, right? And then PR is a files, okay? This is some, some example, right? In order to write the data, 12, 11, 23, and so on, right? We want to write this in the binary format into the, into the binary file, test my test.bit, okay? Maybe up to now you may be confused, but in the afternoon in the lab, right? I will show you the, the programs, right? And then you can understand this. And then when you try to uh, write it and compile it, you will understand 
more about uh, the file processing here. This is an example of how to write the, pro or the binary files, right? This is a simple program. What if you want to write some single integer value? Okay, sometimes maybe you want to write some uh, integer value. My integer, this one. F write my integer, size of integer and one and P out. Just want to, to write a single, a single value. Is it possible? Binary files tend to be written from array. Okay, please note it here, right? Binary files tend to be written from arrays. However, sometimes we might write a single value at the beginning of the file, which will tell us how many arrays or uh, elements are in this file. Okay. Okay, we can try, right? Um, the next thing that I would like to, to show you is that if we want to like a binary file using data structure, okay? I've already, or oh, in the previous slide, right? We want to write the data from array, right? But we can also use the data structure or use structure in order to write it back into the binary file. For this example, if you want to collect the, um, what we call the weather information, right, for a week, right? So first of all, you have to define the data structure of the weather day, right? To uh, the elements inside this is the temperature, humidity, wind, okay? This is uh, the data structure of it. Right, and then we want to keep the data for the January, we want to keep only 31 days. And for February, we will be different to 29 days, for example. So in this way, we have to write the data in different number of days, right? So we can use if, if right, January, size of better days, 21 and P out, right? This is, uh, we write the, the array of temperatures, right? For 20 or uh, for 31 days, okay? And when you come up with, um, to, to this time, right? Maybe you are wondering what will be kept in the binary, con in the binary file, right? So sometimes uh, in the past, right, when I want to, to know the information inside the file, what, what I will do is I will use Notepad or I will use Word Processor in order to dump or in order to show the contents. But for the binary content, if you use uh, Notepad or Word Processor, it, it's not possible to see it. You can see it like um, the, sometimes um, we can say in, in, in the left-hand side of this, like you cannot understand at all about the information here. It will be picked out like, um, like an alien uh, language, right? So if you want to, to know what is inside the binary file, right? You can use hexa dump, right? Or, or, or the, in Linux or in Windows, you can use debug if you can find it. Normally debug uh, is available, right? In the window operating system. Right. When you use this function or this program, right, it will uh, print out the hexa value. This is the, okay, this is the real value, right, binary value, right? But instead of we will put, normally it will be print out as a hexa, hexa information, hexa decimal information. Why? You said that binary file is only zero and one, right? It's binary. Right, but I would I have to say that if you you print out as zero one one zero zero one, right, you it's not possible to understand and it's very long, right? So in instead of showing in terms of the binary format, right, you 
can also use the hexadecimal number, right? Do you remember hexadecimal number, right? Hexadecimal number will start from 0 to F, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? To represent, to represent 10, 11, 12, until 15, right? This is a hexadecimal. Do you remember? Okay, it starts from 0 to 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. So there are 16 possibilities, right? And 10 is 10, uh, A is 10, B is 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So there are 16 possible numbers or alternatives, okay? So seven will be, okay, seven will be, seven will be one, zero, one, 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 okay? This will represent seven. And F will be one, 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 one. This is F. So this one, seven F can be written in terms of the binary as a six, oh, sorry, eight digits. Eight digits here, right? Okay, this is a way that we are going to uh, represent the binary file right, in the hexadecimal format, okay? That's why we have to understand about the hexadecimal number, right? Um, we have already talked about uh, the how to write a program to write binary files. And this one is uh, ex an example of how to open a binary file for input, right? So instead of using WB, right, you can use RB, RB, read binary, okay? Time is it? Okay, it's 10. So we still have about 25 minutes. Okay, this is a format that we want to read a binary file, right? You can, uh, okay, we have F, right? And then now we have F read, right? And the number of the elements will be four as well, right? This is uh, similar to F, right? Okay. And then you can use this one in order to write, um, mm, to write um, the array of test data into the files, into the, the file, right? My test.bin, right? This is the example of binary file reading. And then you can try this in the afternoon, no problem, right? If you don't understand, this is the way that you want to read the file, right? Better day, right? Uh, instead of using WB, right? You can use RB. Right to read. What if the data, what if the structure definition changes? What's happened? What's happened if the data structure that you defined before has been changed? Okay, in this example, um, first of all, you start from integer temperature, right? But Okay, in the future, oh, integer is not enough, right? You have to collect the, the information for the temperature. It should be changed to double. What's happened? Because you have already uh, write into the file, right? But it is in integer format, right? But if you change in your program, you change from integer to double, what shall we do? Maybe first of all, you have to read in integer first and then you try to, in the program, you have to change to double, right? So you, uh, one, one solution is that you may have to define two different types of data structure and then you, you have to read by the previous, previous data structure and then you have to rewrite it later into the double, right? This is a solution. Okay, but if uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you change the data structure, it will impact to the file, the binary file you wrote as well. Important if you write your data as structure, you must read them 
the same way. The same way, okay? You should not try to read each, uh, each structure element separately, okay? This is important. Okay, now here we come to the, the last part of today's lecture, right? Uh, we need to know why do we have to use binary file? It seems to be uh, confusing and it's not nice, <laughs> okay? For me, when I was young, right, when I, uh, when I study computer science, and then uh, I have to write the program in order to deal with the file processing. And then I think text file is very nice, but I don't like binary file, right? Binary file is very, it's, it's not understandable, okay? But um, I have to say like this binary files can be very tricky. So you cannot use text file all the time, right? Because why? Um, the first one is text file is easy to read, right? If you want to maybe, if you want to, to see file, right? see file is also the case of the, sim the simple case for the binary file, right? So first of all, you may have to know the advantage of the text file. Text file is easy to check the content, that's right. Very flexible data structure, right? You can read because you are a human being, you can read the text file easily. And you can also check the read and write logic by examining the files. That's correct. Um, be, be, um, yesterday I prepared uh, this, uh, this lab with my TA, PV, right? And I cannot deal with the binary file because I'm using the, I, I'm, you, you, you have known that I'm using Mac OS, right? So um, text file in Mac OS and window are different. But the text file in binary and in or, or, or uh, in Mac OS or in compared to the window operating system, they are all they are not the same as well. But there are some um, differences. So that's why I asked TA to uh, to to help me to prepare for this lab. Okay. So in the afternoon, right? So I will I. Maybe I think I will um, start every session at um, 1.30, okay? You all come to, uh, to the lab today, 1.30, okay? 1.30, okay? Once again, right, we have two session. Actually, we have three session, uh, four session, right? And, um, Okay, please tell your friend that, uh, please come to the lab 1.30 today, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we come back to the advantages to text files. And the last one is usually portable. Okay, text file is very easy to port, right? Port is portable. It can be written one on one computer platform and read on another platform, okay? Mm, this is, is correct. Okay, this is um, correct. Maybe oh, ASCII file and Unicode. Okay, but compared to the advantages of binary file, binary file is faster to read and write faster, right? For mostly numeric data, the require less, less this space than text file. Suppose you keep this double value here, right? This value require 20 bytes if represented in text, right? You have, because you have to, to, to uh, this one, there are 20 characters. So that's why you have to use 20 bytes for represent this text, but for binary, you can just simply use eight bytes. Okay, that's correct. If you are storing multiple items on the same size, right, from array of structure, you can do direct access to specific access. Because when you keep the data in the binary file, right? You don't have to uh, access it sequentially. Sequentially means you have to start from the first and then second, third, and so on. But for the data structure, you can jump into the address that you want that we call direct access to the specific data. 
specific data means if you want to go to the like like in the the main dish you know and you want to go to the price of the the 10th the 10 elements so you can just jump to the dish number 10 right dot price this is a way that you can access to the files right directly this we call direct access but for the sequential access right you have to start from zero one two three and so on right until you can access to this right this is a this is a pros pro of the binary files program can be simpler due to the ability to write multiple records in one statement okay this is the very very good way of using binary files right if you can see that uh, for the pre from the previous slide if you want to read the file you can just read a bunch of where you you see if read this one you can just simply read the data right maybe maximum 50 data at a time right size of here but this one is one okay you read only one record right but this one if we change to 50 so you will read 50 records at a time from the files so by using just only one statement that's very easy and nice okay so this is why i go to the advantage of this right this program can be simpler right you can ability to write multiple records in one statement in one statement and the last one this is the uh, about the security or privacy right data store are more private it's about privacy you need to know the file structure if you are not the owner of the structure you don't know the data structure of this file right so it's difficult to understand or it's difficult to guess right so if you write your own binary file right at least you will have to know that no one can access to your file uh, otherwise they know about the, your data structure but if you have your own data structure and no one you know right so it's very private and it is also secured right because it's not under easy to understand mm -hmm. okay this is the advantages of using the binary files we have the advantages and we also have to talk about the disadvantages as well when you use take file right when all the data to be stored are character string and the string okay this is um the the attributes or the features of the text files but right? when all all the data to be stored will be character string right only character string will be kept in the in the text file right and it is human readable when you need to be able to write file on one computer platform you can read in another okay this is also the advantages of the text file when you use binary file right when much of the data to be stored is numeric okay to keep the data the numeric data right if you want a lot of data you know that now we are in the, the era of big data right also you are the international program students right you have you have to study big data as your required course and also you have to study data model right this is the future uh future course future courses that you need to know right this is the differences between legra program and international program international program you will go to the data model big data and um, and the business analytics. This is all about the, da the data analytics. We, uh, you will go to that track, but instead um, for the regular program student, they will go to the IoT track or embedded system. They will go into detail about hardware, 
right? But for you, right, you will go through the data analysis, big data, data model, business analytics, okay? Then I think it is a future, um, future contents and it is very new and modern things that you have to know, okay? So that's why you need, today class is quite important because you know how to read and write the binary files, right? And in the, in the future, you need to deal with the big data, right? And the data also, they also keep in a numeric format. So you need uh, that a lot of data to be stored in the future, right? When the data is stored, they have the same structure. And when you expect the file written to be read on the same computer platform, right? If you go to another platform, you may have to write the new binary file before you read. Okay, different platform, if you have different format for the binary files, this is a thing that you may have to keep in your mind. Okay, for text file, it's okay. You can, you can portable, it is portable. You can use your text file in iOS and then you can open it in window. That's not the problem. But for binary file, if you write the program in Mac OS, and then if you want to, to, to show in the window format, maybe you have to recompile the program again, okay? You have to keep in mind, I have to be careful about this. I'm sorry that I have no break for today class because um, it is um, very uh, long lecture today, okay? And more about file access, right? The file position, I have already talked about the file position. The operating system OS, actually uh, the file, the structure of file, right? Keep tab, keep tab of where you are in the open file. When you open the file, right? You need to, to travel along this file. The file is always sequential, right? Sequential means you have to, uh, to travel along the, along the file, right? You have to keep track on the file. So you need to know the address of the file, the current position. Maybe you come here, we come to this location, but right? you have to keep track on this address or this location or this position. If you change the position, the, 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 the file accessing, accessing position will be changed. Whenever you read or write information, the position changes. When you open a file, the position is at the beginning, before the first byte in the file. At the beginning, what does it mean beginning? Before the first byte in the file. After you read some data, the position moves to immediately after the last byte you read. You read, right? The next time you read some data, you will start at the new position. Okay, once you read, Right, the position will be changed. Okay, this is once again. If you are writing a file sequence sequentially, right, from start to finish, the file position move to after the last byte in the file after each write operation. Okay, but if you want to know the position of the file, you can use the function f seek, right. And and also f tell to find out where you are in the file. F6 is to jump into the position that you want to, 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 to go. F6, if you want to jump to the position of the file, you want to go. But f tail will show you where you are in the file. Okay, here we are. There. And here is here are the list of the useful functions for file, right? If you want to check for the existence of the file, you can use access, right? If you want to delete a file, you can use a link. If you want to move the current position to the beginning of the file, you can use rewind. If you want to go back to the, the beginning of the file and read it again, you use the rewind as its name. If you want to find the file size, you can use stat or if stat, right? If you want to know the age, the age the creation date or the updated date, right? You can use the stat 
or if that. Okay. Okay, here will be the, the introduction to the lab assignment in the afternoon. Okay, now we are at the end of this today lecture. Okay, I have to stop.